Is it great to have Sonny Gray back or what? The righty dominates his former team and does something that I don't know if I've ever seen a starting pitcher do during a regular season game. This is Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou and a lifetime Cardinals fan, and I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. Follow me on Twitter, X, at J.D. Sports Radio, and the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, and we're also on YouTube. If you haven't joined us there yet, come on by, like, subscribe, and comment. Hit the notification button so you know when new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Today's episode brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I've got a competitive side, and it is a big fan. Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. So on uh, Jackie Robinson Day around the league on Monday, Sonny Gray returned to where it all started in his career. He, he was back in Oakland and uh, on the mound at the decrepit Oakland Coliseum. Uh, it's it's really sad to see what has happened to that stadium, and I feel bad for the fan base as well. Uh, they don't deserve what's happening to them. Uh, St. Louis Rams fans, feel your pain. Oakland, we, we went through it. You know, we, we get a good product on the field, show up in droves, get a bad product, doesn't seem like uh, ownership wants to do much for you. You don't show up, and then you lose your team. And uh, it's unfortunate. It's an ugly thing that's going on in baseball right now. But despite having a soft spot for the Oakland Coliseum and the fans, Sonny Gray showed little to no mercy <laughs> on Monday night as he fired six shutout innings, allowing just four hits. One of my favorite things, he doesn't walk a single batter, strikes out six. And you could say that the A's lineup isn't that great and all, but... They're still a major league lineup. They've still got major league hitters for the most part up and down the lineup. Uh, they'd won six of their last eight, and Gray diced them up like a hibachi chef. So impressive on Monday, dotting the zone with everything in his arsenal. Uh, that sweeper that we heard so much about, is, is it's just filthy against both righties and lefties. He was on a 75-pitch count, and for a bit there, it seemed like he might be able to get through seven innings. He was just shredding the A's quickly uh, until the fourth inning when the A's got a couple of singles and uh, worked some counts a little bit longer. But Sonny was able to work around those, and then he did something that I, I don't know if I've ever seen in a regular season game. So when the Cardinals offense put together some runs uh, and, and put the back, you know, a couple of hits together in the sixth inning, the A's decided they were going to make a pitching change, and, um, you know, the, the inning was a little bit longer than what, they had been used to so far on Monday night. Um, so Sonny decided to just go on down to the bullpen and, and throw a little bit more just to stay warm. And Ollie said after the game that it was about keeping his lower half warm, not so much the arm is, is not what they were doing. They were just trying to keep his lower half warm because remember, he's coming back from that hammy strain that, that knocked him out at the beginning of the season. I, I don't know if we, can we get him a stationary bike or something like that. I don't know if they exist at the Oakland Coliseum. I don't know what their weight room looks like. Uh, I'm sure it's pretty bad. Uh, but can we can we just get him something like that, the stationary bike, like the NFL players have on the sidelines of their games? That way, he doesn't have to use his arm any more than he needs to. But um, I, I just honestly, I don't know if I've ever seen that during a, a regular season game. They were they were coming back from commercial and. I thought they were just showing footage from earlier in the game. Like, hey, this is Sonny Gray's first start the season back at Oak. No, <laughs> it was Sonny coming back from the bullpen while throwing a shutout. No big deal. No big deal, right? Uh, according to Derek Gould at stltoday.com, Sonny landed six different pitches in his six scoreless innings. He got a swing and miss on five of them, all but the curveball. He got a called strike on five of them, too. Only the changeup didn't freeze a batter. It was his 100th win in his career, his major league career, and his second for the Cardinals since 
uh, joining the team this offseason. And it was extra special because he got to do it against the team that he came up with, drafted by the Oakland A's in the first round, uh, got to do it in a stadium that he called home for a number of years. Uh, after the game, he even pointed out how leading up to the game, he kind of re realized that this is probably the last time he'll ever get to pitch in this stadium and, and how that it meant something to him uh, because the team's going to be moving. They're going to Sacramento for the next couple of years to play, and then they're going to be in Vegas, we think. We think that's happening. Um, but he talked about how he had so many good memories and uh, – you know, it, it was kind of a, a big deal to him to, to be able to win his 100th game where it all began in Oakland. So, um, you know, I, I know we can all agree that I'm glad he's spinning gems at wearing the birds on the bat instead of wearing the, the green and gold of the Oakland A's because uh, that was nice to see tonight, man. He was, he was really good again. Uh, as far as the rest of the game went on the pitching side of things, Andrew Kittredge threw, on a, threw a scoreless inning. Uh, after allowing a leadoff walk, he took over in the seventh inning. It appeared that he was having a little bit of trouble just kind of getting comfortable on the mound. He kept looking down on it while he was uh, throwing to that first hitter who ended up walking, uh, but settled in after that, got a strikeout that induced another double play. Uh, sweet little pick by Arenado over at third base. Uh, it was just a little quick one, flips it over to Gorman. Gorman makes that smooth turn and uses the strong arm to end the inning. The Cardinals have now turned 18 double plays which is uh second in the league to the a's and tied with the pirates and the blue jays speaking of defense how about a shout out for wilson Contreras, who gunned down a runner trying to steal second base did it from his knees in the bottom of the first inning just a just a pus line down to second base and i'm sure it would have made yadier molina very very proud if we knew where the hell yadier molina is uh is he is he getting a paycheck from the cardinals is he actually a part of the organization still like we have not heard anything radio silence on the out of year Molina front. Was, was this all just a gag at the beginning of the year? Like what has happened? How do we not have answers to this yet? Um, but something that did not happen when the out of Molina was uh, behind the plate opponents had been 13 of 13 on stolen base attempts against the Cardinals through the first 16 games. That was the first one they've thrown out. That's a little scary. Got to get better at that. And I don't know who to blame. I don't know if it's just the catchers or the pitchers. Probably a combination of both because you got to be able to hold the runners on too. But anyway, I, I didn't realize that until tonight. I was like, oh my gosh, really? So uh, Jojo Romero gives up a solo home run and uh, his one inning of work. Another home run against the Cardinals. <laughs> but also punched out one. It was just a solo shot. And then Helsley comes on in the ninth inning. And once again, virtually unhittable. Striking out two to pick up his sixth save of the year, which ties him at the top of the leaderboards in the league with the uh, Yankees, Clay Holmes, and then the Padres, Robert Suarez. So um, pitching-wise, defense-wise, good night all around outside of the, the solo home run, which is a, was a bomb by Ruiz. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't a cheapie. Uh, other than that, not a whole lot to complain about when it comes to the pitching side and the defensive side of things. We're going to talk about the offense next. The boys did pick up some key hits in a uh, Jordan Walker did something tonight that, that might hint that he's about to break out of this early season slump. We'll get into it next on Locked on Cardinals. We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime, and the, the scoreboard's just it's not looking so good for your team. You're feeling low, not sure you or your team can pull out the win. That's when you dig deep, you lift your head up, and say to yourself, it's time to get back in the game. Pull off some bank heist and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. Wait, what? Yeah, that's right. The smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go. It is available now. Let you compete with your friends to get the most riches in the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you grew up. It's the Monopoly you love. But it's now on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards, to compare your progress to your buddies. Uh, you can play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. You can make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball, which is awesome. Uh, charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go. I know you play games on your phone. If you haven't tried this yet, you're missing out. Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. 
Also brought to you by Game Time, now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier to go see your favorite teams, just like the St. Louis Cardinals. Prices on the Game Time app, they actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. My my wife and I, we love going down to the ballpark. One of my favorite things. One of the main reasons why I married her is because she enjoys going to the ballpark and actually watching the game. OK, she doesn't just tinker around on her phone the whole time and screw around. She wants to watch the game. She eats a hot dog. She has a beer. She watches baseball. Fantastic. And to get into the game, very, very easy when it comes to game time. You know how unpredictable the weather could be in the Midwest. So we actually like to wait as long as we can day of game style. To, to pick out our seats, and the Game Time app is what I use to get into the ballpark each and every time because of the killer last minute deals that they have. Uh, the fact they got all in prices, views from your seat, and the lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets, and the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets. With Game Time, just download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On MLB for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code Locked On MLB. That's L O C K E D O N M L B for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. It's Locked On's NFL Mock Draft live on April 17th. That would be Wednesday for everybody who's trying to keep track at home. 7 o'clock Eastern, streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. You can find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern to hear who the local Locked On experts are going to be picking for every NFL franchise. I'm curious what they're going to do from a Green Bay Packers, but live reactions from local college football experts, even the fantasy football angle, because that's important too. Locked on NFL Mock Draft, April 17th, 7 p.m. Eastern, streaming live on Locked on Sports Today, 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. So the offense scored three runs again <laughs> on Monday night. Three is a serious number. I, I know that's not it's six is a serious number on the commercial, right? But three has been a, an all too familiar number for them this season. They have scored three runs in seven games now this season. Seven. Luckily for them, that was enough thanks to uh, the pitching staff stellar performance on Monday night. But one thing they did jumped out early. That That's always nice. You always like to have any uh, a lead early on in a game. First inning. Paul Goldschmidt works the walk. New bar bunts, although it was not a sacrifice attempt. I think he was just trying to catch the A's uh, infield defense off guard. But uh, it, it got the job done because it moved Goldie into scoring position. And Nolan Arenado brings him home and uh, hits the base hit to left field to make it one to nothing. Wilson Contreras doubles on a 111-mile-per-hour screamer to center field. Hit it so hard that it got there so quick. Arenado, who's not – we know he's not fast. Has to stop at third base, so you got second and third, two out. Unfortunately, uh, Gorman flies out, but it was a lead. It was a lead, which is always nice to start with. So Cardinals would strike again in the sixth inning when Lars Newtbar leads off the inning with uh, another double. It's this one to left center. Nato hits one that I think all of us thought it was a home run off the bat. I think everybody in the stadium, I think everybody on the field, I think everybody watching thought it was going to clear the wall in left field, and it just dies like it just dies at the 360 foot mark and you can see after the fact no one was like talking to his guys in the dugout he's like how how did that not get over the wall time to get to the weight room no one no i'm kidding but um new moves up to third base good base running there because it was a deep enough fly ball even though it was to left field that newt could scamper over to third base so wilson Contreras comes up next you got a runner on third one out and he rips another double down the line at third to make it two to nothing. Gorman ends up grounding out to the second baseman, moving Contreras to third base. So at least he gets a job done. See how not striking out? See how not striking out can be quite useful, even if it's not a hit. Mason Wynn takes a walk, which uh, knocks Ross Stripling from the game. They, bro they go to their bullpen. And Jordan Walker steps up next. And if you've been watching these games, and I'm sure you have, 
you've seen him struggling with what? The breaking ball away. That's been the problem. All of the pitchers are throwing everything to the outside portion of the plate or outside of the zone. Then he's, you know, when, when it's in the zone, he can't hit it. When it's a ball outside of the zone, he's chasing it anyway. And this is why he's struggling right now. And pitchers know this. It's in the scouting report. So they just keep hammering that side of the plate. And um, tonight was the same thing. They just kind of they pounded it over and over and over to the outside portion of the plate. Now, earlier in the game, he drove a sinking, like a, it was a pitch that was away, drove a sinking line drive uh, into right field, got robbed. Got robbed. Nothing he can do there. Sliding catch by the right fielder. Kudos to him. Great play. But the A's didn't adjust the game plan. They're like, well, we got him out with it, so let's keep doing it. So first pitch, slider out of the zone and away for a ball. Second pitch, slider out of the zone and away, but Ump gives the uh, the pitcher the call, which was a terrible call. Jordan was visibly frustrated by that because he's having enough trouble already. He doesn't need the Ump <laughs> giving the pitcher a pitch that's three inches outside as a strike, okay? He don't need that right now. He needs that, that to be a ball because he's trying not to chase those pitches. And he's doing his best. Pitcher decides to go out there for a third time. Sweeper, same location, but this time Jordan says, screw you, Ump. I'm not giving it to you. I'm not giving you a chance to call strike two on me. Takes it to right field. RBI single makes it three to nothing. And, you know, that's, that's what you want to see out of Walker. That's what you're looking for right now. The pitchers are going to keep doing this. And this is going to be their game plan until he proves to them that he can hit that pitch and take it to right field. It's not going to do any wonders for his power numbers because that's a really tough pitch to hit over a wall. But if he starts getting base hits on it, they'll start moving back in, and that's when he can unleash the power. Um, it's easier said than done. I know that. He knows what they're trying to do to him. He's a smart kid. He's a good hitter. It'll come to him. He's hit at every level. He'll figure it out, and he's going to get better at it. I have no doubts about that. He nailed it earlier in the game, was robbed, gets it down this time, though. Great piece of hitting. Good job, Jordan Walker. And that's really all the Cardinals would muster when it comes to the offense. Not a whole lot going on there. Uh, some other notes from tonight. Brendan Donovan took a pitch off the right knee in the top of the seventh inning, hobbling a ton after he walked down to the first baseline, and he could barely put weight on it. Loosens it up a little bit, decides, you know what? I'm a tough, a tough SOB. I'm going to stay in this game. And he did, but we'll see how things uh, react overnight. If there's any swelling on the outside of that knee, left handed pitcher on the mound tomorrow, JP Sears. Uh, maybe Donovan gets the day off to kind of rest that knee. We'll see how he feels. Maybe he doesn't swell. Maybe he ices it and everything's fine tomorrow, but uh, we'll see. Paul Goldschmidt, his swing looks so long. And so slow right now. Like, it's not getting much better so far. He's not even catching up. Like, they're throwing fastballs right over the heart of the plate to him, and he can't catch up to him. So, I hope he can break out soon because, uh, you know, they've got him in that number two hole, which is fine, but he's just having such a tough time. And, uh, you know, when you got somebody like Mason Wynn down here hitting 370, and you got Paul Goldschmidt hitting under 200, in a, in a bigger role up there at the top of the lineup, you know, it, it's tough. Like, you don't want to move Goldie out of it. I get why Ali doesn't want to. You know, he's a veteran. He was just the MVP in 2022. But it, it's tough watching his at-bats right now. Uh, two hits piece for Nato and Contreras in this one. Both of them now up to 286 on the season. Nato definitely looking more like himself. He's starting to break out of it. Contreras, he's clearly dealing with some discomfort in that hand still. But he's a stud, man. Two more doubles tonight, and uh, there's not a. He, he looks good behind the plate too. Like, doesn't he? Like, have you looked at it, the way he's framing and stuff? He looks good back there. Uh, Mason Wynn, two for three, as I mentioned, now hitting three seventy. Uh, I'd like to put an APB out on all of the critics who told me all off season that he could not hit at the major league level. After watching him hit for one month in the show last year. All of these people had decided that Mason Wynn was terrible. He was never going to be a good hitter and that uh, the Cardinals should uh, give up on him and do whatever, do something with him. I'm worried about them because I, I, I don't hear from them anymore. They're so silent. 
If you know one of these people who were like that in the off season, maybe a wellness check, maybe go over, knock on the door, see if they're doing okay. Because uh, I, I don't know if they're still breathing anymore. They're that quiet. Um, then we get to Victor Scott, the second. Oh, for four tonight, another strikeout. He's now hitting. Oh, 91 over 55 at bats, which is two walks and two stolen bases. I know the defense is really good. I get that. But man, you are going into these games handicapped every time he's in the lineup, at least right now. I mean, it's like having just eight hitters in your lineup while the other team is starting nine. And it's rough. You know, you've seen him get a couple of sack flies. I don't know why he can't get the ball down on the ground and use his legs more. It's just, whatever's going on. He continues to just hit it in the air and he's flying out all the time or he's striking out in general. Um, the thing is, though, like you don't have that minute or Carlson to lean on and put them in instead. What are you going to do? You're going to start Michael Ciani, who's hitting 100 <laughs> right now. He's not doing much better. Albeit he's got limited at bats, but he's never really been the offensive guy that's been kind of the knock on Siani. Good defense, good speed. Not a great hitter. Um, it's a tough call because this pitching staff needs his defense out there. So it's a tough spot to be in. Um, if he could just provide something, like take some walks or something, just anything, that would make it a whole lot easier to keep him around. But, you know, it's just rough. It's rough watching it because you know he's not supposed to be there yet and he's doing his best. But these guys, these, these major league pitchers are eating them up. All right, up next, I've got a, a bozo moment of the game. We're bringing it back because something happened tonight, which made me chuckle. And uh, thankfully, it didn't cost the Cardinals anything. We'll do that next on Locked on Cardinals. Are you struggling to close deals? B2B selling is tougher than ever, and that's why I want to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high-value customers driving higher revenue and increased sales performance. Sales Navigator helps you target the right buyer, surface key signals such as job changes or which accounts you should prioritize, and it shows you hidden allies so that you can find those buyers that are more likely to convert. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data, enabling you to unlock conversations with the people that matter. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. That's linkedin.com slash locked on for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Nav Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash locked on and get started. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the Free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports today, now available on the Free Fire TV channels app. All right, it's time for our, our bozo moment of the game. So in the seventh inning... We get to the seventh inning, and this is the inning where uh, Brendan Donovan leads off the game, and he gets hit on the knee, right? So he's down at first base, and next batter is Paul Goldschmidt. Pops out. Pops out early. I might have, might have been the first pitch, if I if I remember correctly. So, But it was quickly. So uh, <laughs> next batter is Lars Newpar. Now, Lars hits one down first baseline to the first baseman who steps on first to get the first out spins throws to second base tag at second um calls donovan out sliding into second base all right they go to commercial they come back and for some reason we're seeing a video footage of ali marmel and he's looking over at bench coach daniel descalso and the Cardinals are checking to see if they should review this play or not, is the whole idea. Ollie's standing at the dugout. He's staring at the Scalso. He's on the phone. And a security guard for the Oakland Coliseum walks right in between them, blocking Ollie's view. I'm going to put the picture up of, uh, of part of the video. Uh, so he throws it up there, and he goes right in between them. And 
Ali tries to stop him by throwing his arm out in front of him first. Then he grabs the guy's collar to kind of move him aside and also keep the guy because the guy kind of like tripped a little bit and he's trying to hold him up some too. All at the same time, he's trying to signal that he wants the replay to happen to the umpires. But because of the momentary blockage there, he didn't get the signal from Descalso in time to challenge the call. So the game continues. And Ali throws his hands up like, what the hell, dude? Tries to plead his case to the umpires, like points to the guy. He's like, dude, this guy just got in the way. But no go. Uh, credit to the security guard, man. What defense? What defense? I mean, what a move to help the A's. That's a, that's a team player right now. That's a team player that you want on your squad. I mean, you got to like that out of the security guard. So um, Bozo play of the game goes to that security guard for <laughs> trying. To, he really didn't mean to do it. So I kind of felt bad for the guy because it, it kind of made Ollie look kind of like a dick, to be honest. But um, I know he wasn't trying to hurt the guy. He was just trying to get his signal from Descalso. But anyway, it didn't hurt anything. Cardinals didn't need the runs. But um, let's go to a brighter moment of the game. Another moment that was really cool early on. Uh, I was watching the A's telecast, and I've told you that before. I like to sometimes watch from uh, the other side's point of view. And their play-by-play -play announcer is Chris Carey, who is the son of Cardinals announcer Chip Carey. And I know they talked about this on this Cardinals side as well. But on the A's side, it was a conversation between him and uh, I think it's Dallas Braden is uh, the, the color announcer for the A's. And they were talking about how cool it was that Chris was getting to do a major league game at the same time, the same game that his dad was doing for the Cardinals and how much it meant to him. And he, he got a little choked up and he got a little teary eyed, uh, which was, it was a nice moment, man. It's a father son moment. And uh, I thought it was pretty cool. So I wanted to point that out. Best moment though, of the entire game, obviously the final score, you got the Cardinals winning this one three to one moves them to eight, and nine on the year Tuesday night. You got Lance Lynn on the slab for the Redbirds against JP Sears. Uh, Lynn, no record so far this year, but he's got a nice 2.63 ERA. You know, I mean, Lynn's been better than I thought he was going to be. I, I, I'm, I'm a big boy. I can admit when I'm, I'm wrong. Lynn's been better than I thought he was going to be. Sears on the other side, he's one and one, 5.17 ERA. As I mentioned, he's a left-handed uh, pitcher. So we'll see what kind of lineup we've got uh, from Ali on Tuesday. We'll see how Donovan's knees doing to see. Uh, if there's any swelling or anything, because uh, if there's not, then he's probably going to be in the lineup. If there is, and he's a little hobbled by it, probably a good day to give him uh, get off his feet. Uh, Goldie, by the way, two for two in his career against J.P. Sears with a dinger. So maybe, maybe tomorrow's the day that uh, Goldie gets things going and, and breaks out of this funk. We'll find out. First pitch going to be at 840 St. Louis time. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter X at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Please like and subscribe on YouTube if you haven't done that already. Uh, we're making that push for 10,000 subscribers. We're at like uh, 95, 95, something like that. So we're less than 500 away from getting to 10,000 subscribers. So could use your help if you haven't uh, clicked that. Uh, subscribe button. Yeah, that I'd appreciate that. It helps our channel, helps our love for the Cardinals grow, helps me pay my taxes, which I had to do today, which was uh, very expensive. You're the best fans in baseball for a reason. And I will see you next time on Locked on Cardinals.